Hi, my name is Natalie Dedwell, and today I'd like to share with you how to create habits that maximize your personal growth. Now, in a perfect world, I bet that we'd all love to try new things, accomplish new goals, and check everything off our to-do list, all with ease and all with grace. Well, we may not live in a perfect world, but when it comes to personal development, I just may have a few success tips to help you become near perfect at creating new habits. Now, I have to admit, I used to have a hard time staying focused on one task or project, especially at the time that we were building the My Movies platform. Like we had so many different things and wearing so many different hats, it was really hard to stay focused. Now, it was really hard to form new habits that I knew that I needed to be more successful in building our business. And getting overwhelmed and getting bogged down by anxiety often led me to just giving up instead of pushing forward. And no matter the amount of life advice or inspiration I received from those people around me, I soon understood that it was really about what I needed to do to master new habits and skills for success for myself. So if you're struggling to stay focused and want to learn how to be more successful at, well, just getting things done, I have some practical advice to help you on your way. And this isn't one of those everyday how-to videos because this time we're going to dig deep into some concrete ways that you can implement successful driven habits so that you can really maximize your personal growth. The first one is to make a list and check it twice. <laughs> now, my students often ask me, hey Natalie, what's the most useful thing that you can use to stay organized and on top of your work? Well, there happens to be two things, a pad of paper and a pen. <laughs> So if you know me, then I've probably already mentioned how I love writing out my to-do list on a pad of paper. Uh, it may seem old school, but the act of writing out my daily tasks has really helped me tremendously in staying productive. Now I make sure that I write the list the night before. And you know, there's all this satisfaction from being able to tick that thing off that you know that you've been able to do that. And it's this sense of accomplishment that, looks at, that, that you get from looking at that accomplished list. Now studies show that physically writing out notes, like in the form of a to-do list, actually helps you to retain the information better than just hearing it or reading it. And it's not just making a list. I mean, that's the easy part. It's more about using the list as a guide throughout the day and making a point of crossing the items off as they get done. Now, as I mentioned, I like to write out my tasks for the day, including the really small ones, and leave it near my bed. Then in the morning, I would move it to my workspace. This way, it's always there in my peripherals as a visual reminder throughout the day. Then if I have a spare like 10 minutes before my next interview or my next video, then I know what I can fit into that time slot. So I'm being as productive as I possibly can. Now at the end of the day, I review my to-do list to see exactly what I was able to accomplish. And I had to train myself to get into the habit of checking my list both at the beginning and at the end of the day. And then periodically I do it throughout the day to see what I need to do next. That small act of holding myself accountable, you know, just like an employer or a manager would, soon turned into a highly beneficial habit for me because I was actually seeing massive results. So consistently managing my to-do list has become a conductor of my motivational training, allowing me to always keep moving forward. Now number two, is to understand the why. Okay, so now that you can see the benefits of list making, it's time to break down that list and get a better sense of how you are utilizing your time. Okay, so let's just say that you have three items on your to-do list and you are able to complete one, but not the other two. So for all three, you're going to write down the resolution to the task. So whether you are able to complete it or not. And most importantly, the reason why you weren't able to complete it. Now again, this is an excellent habit for keeping yourself accountable. So making notes on what worked and what didn't is an easy way to get insight into your process and your worth ethic. So instead of just settling on the fact that something didn't get done, you're making a conscious effort to understand exactly why it didn't get done. So let's say the reason that you weren't able to complete a task is that you ran out of time to do it that day. So going forward, when you attempt the task again, you know that you need to give yourself a little bit more time 
that's going to yield a more successful outcome. Or maybe you weren't able to complete a task because you were distracted by something in your work environment. Now with this information written down, you know that for next time, you may need to adjust or change your environment to get this task list, crossed off your list. Then for the task you, that you were able to complete, maybe the reason you got it done is that you planned ahead and you carved out plenty of time. So acknowledge those small wins too by making a note of it. Now being open and honest with yourself about exactly how you are working is going to create tremendous adjustments in your productivity. Now when you are mindful of this, it creates a habit that becomes less of something that you just do every day and more of part of who you really are. So no more guessing or putting things off for later because you are essentially tracking your formula for success. Okay, so number three, is to don't take too much on at once. <laughs> now, ladies, can we, can we relate to this or what? <laughs> now, a huge reason why it's hard to stay focused and push through the challenging tasks is that sometimes we just have too much on our plate. And trust me, I get it. <laughs> Life is happening all around us with no plans of slowing down. So when you see that you have a lot to do, you may have already conditioned yourself to procrastinate or just save it for another time. So to break this habit and to turn your gut reaction into tackling your to-do list head on, you've got to break things up into digestible chunks. So lists are great, but when there's too much on them and there's too much to do, understand that we're all human. So you've got to be prepared for potential obstacles and setbacks. Now, I used to believe that I had to get everything done right away simply because it was on my list. But I found that a great way to cut down on obstacles is to section off time. So when I have a handful of projects, I take a look at everything and determine what I can get done in exactly one week. Seven days is a substantial amount of time to get through a single project and also the right amount of time to deal with delays or setbacks. Now I also make calculated decisions to schedule specific projects or tasks for the following week to come. So start to get better acquainted with your calendar because spreading out tasks week to week is going to tremendously cut down on overwhelm and procrastination. Okay, so number four is to I get to fill in the blank. <laughs> so early on, I had to start getting in the habit of saying I get statements. So similar to affirmations, I get statements have really transformed my overall mindset to embrace all of the amazing things and the projects and the tasks that I get to do. So it's easy for frustration to creep in when you look at new projects or items on your to-do list when you have other things to do as well. So when you make a habit to reference your tasks as I get to do these things, this increases your overall alignment with your intentions, making it that much easier to get things done. So for example, I get to host a weekly conference call. I get to run a training session for my employees. I get to travel for work. Like how cool is that? Now imagine replacing I get with I have to. I have to host a weekly conference call. Or I have to run a training session for my employees. Or I have to travel for work. <laughs> well, that's, they sound more like chores to me. So understand the power of simply changing a single word to completely shift your vibration. So when you use I get statements instead, you are telling the universe that you are grateful for your life and you have no problem at all getting all the things done. Okay, so now number five is lasting change requires forgiveness. Okay, so if something didn't get done, that's okay because you must learn to forgive yourself. You see, a big reason that we may want to wave our white flag is because we beat ourselves up over not getting things done the right way or not getting them done in the right time. But when you forgive yourself, you are allowing yourself to learn from your mistakes so that there are fewer of them going forward. Learning to forgive yourself is all a part of moving forward. So getting frustrated or giving up without trying is not going to be the best use of your time, right? Now remember, lasting change requires the unlearning of bad habits and the relearning of good ones, including forgiveness. All right, so before I go, I would love to hear from you. 
Do you have any other tips on how to maximize personal growth? Please share your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the My Movies YouTube channel for more videos on personal growth and the law of attraction. My name is Natalie Level. Thank you for watching and bye for now.